One of the most prolific and exciting filmmakers working today is Takeshi Miike. Whatever he puts out, I'm always desperate to get a hold of to check it out to see whether it's going to be one of those outlandishly crazy Miki movies or one of those more subtle get under your skin kind of movies and also this year I happened to check out the anime Jojo's Bizarre Adventure season 1 which I absolutely loved this uh, is a, f a live action version of season 4 of that anime series entitled Diamond is Unbreakable and this follows some aspects of that TV series, which I'm glad I had seen before, kind of kind of knew where it was going. We all have this uh, main character of Joe, uh, Joe Star, Joe Shu, who has this special ability, this supernatural power that allows him to heal things or strike people with uh, immeasurable force. And it turns out that in his hometown, there is somebody giving other people these abilities as well. Only their abilities are more threatening and more horrific to other people, actually killing several people and it's up to Joe to track down who's doing this and stop them some way, shape or form. It is a typical Miki movie as in it's very stylistically shot, lots of smoke, lots of action. There is some special effects which are used to good effect later on, some of them not so much, but it's the style he adds to this live action adaptation of a beloved TV show. It takes things that shouldn't really work, that are visually off-putting to start off with, like some of the stylistic touches of the character. Uh, Joe's hair uh, is something that's very predominant in the, the series and it is something that doesn't really look too great like in live action form, but it becomes almost intrinsically part of the storyline which really adds to it as well. And we have here uh, a person discovering their powers, trying to use them for good and trying to outsmart other nefarious people by battling with each other. Now their supernatural powers are all different and they all uh, appear in different ways, shape or forms. We have Joe's who is a giant sort of like sort of purple man that appears behind him that does the fighting for him. We have uh, a man who can control water and who uses it very effectively in several scenes to create torment of and, and, and horrific deaths to certain people by being ingested and, and destroying their insides. It's horrific to think about and horrific to watch as well. We have several fight scenes that take place in stunning locations and the locations do look fantastic here. And it's Mickey, he knows how to shoot the hell out of them and they all look stunning and varied. We have this creepy haunted mansion at the final third of the movie where the big fight scene takes place between Joe and these two brothers that are causing havoc in his town and seeing each of their supernatural powers are fun and just so different. I would want to tell you about the main villain's supernatural powers but I think it's something that you really need to see to believe because it's so inventive, it's so different, it's so fun, it's so captivating. The action in this movie is fast, kinetic, well shot and just looks stunning and is unlike other things I've seen before. The movie does start by saying that this is chapter one, which gives me hope that Miki is hopefully going to go on and do further arcs in this series because I would love that. If not, I'm still excited about what is going to come next in the Diamond is Unbreakable universe. If this is something that looks a bit bright, a little bit colourful and a bit out there and there's something you're unsure about checking out, I can wholeheartedly recommend Diamond is Unbreakable. I think it was different. It was expertly shot, it looked fantastic, it had kinetic action fight scenes, it had just a great storyline with some decent characters that I could really attune to. It was uh, nicely told and I think there is some definite curveballs to come and the subsequent adventures after this. This, however, is a self-contained story, which I like as well. It doesn't end on a particular cliffhanger, uh, and even though there's going to be chapter two, it's just nicely done. It tells a nice, concise story that I think is well worth checking out. So much fun, and just has that crazy Asian action kind of movie sensibilities that I absolutely adore. So if you haven't seen Diamond is Unbreakable, I'd love to know if this is something you're going to check out. If you have seen that season of the show, how does this match up to that? Does it kind of follow the first few episodes or does it take bits from all through this, this season and, and make its own story? Let me know in the comment box below 
and I'll see you next time on Man Versus Film.